Okay, this clip is um, at ISO 800. Um, exposure index is set at 800 as well. We um, have highlight detail being lost up here, a bit of blowout up here in the bush as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to this clip here where we've introduced an ND filter. So the ND filter is bringing back our highlights in here, bringing back the highlights in the top of the tree. We're still at ISO 800. Exposure index is still set at 800. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, all the highlight information here is well below clipping point. And now we're going to go to our next clip where what we've done is we've now lifted from our ISO 800 our exposure index is now set at 3200. We still have the ND filter on, but what we're getting is more information here in the highlights. Um, information here in the highlights, but we're not we're not crushing our shadows. Now we've lifted those shadows back up uh, in here from our previous clip, but we are maintaining our highlights. And as you can see up here, the highlights are now rolling straight down well below the clipping point over here. And we're just scraping by underneath 100% there as well. Okay, so we're just going to look at this side-by-side uh, -side comparison here. So what we have on the left-hand side is our scene, which was shot at 800 ISO and 800 EI. And as you can see from the red box around the middle here, dynamic range, we're showing uh, six stops available dynamic range in the highlights and around uh, nine stops of dynamic range available in the shadows. Um, but I want to draw your attention over to the right hand side of the screen here and as you can see by pushing our exposure index up to 3200 what we're doing is we're gaining an extra two stops of highlight dynamic range so going from the six stops at 800 EI up to eight stops at uh, 3200 EI so what I did was when I shot this scene we had our highlights blowing out at 800 EI I've applied a three stop ND and then we've pushed two stops up in the exposure index which still leaves us one stop of ND to uh, maintain that great exposure but we're actually getting more dynamic range in the highlights by going up to that 3200 EI. Okay so looking side by side I had a couple of screenshots this is our original clip on the left you can see the um, highlight information is uh, on the verge of clipping, we're losing a bit of the detail in that tree here. Um, top of the bush over here is also um, just about to clip. Uh, we're just losing some detail through those highlight areas, whereas in, uh, in our adjusted clip, we can see that all of that highlight information is retained. Um, we're not blowing out the center part of the tree here like we are on the left. We're just some of that highlight is blowing around onto the front side of the tree and we're losing that information, that detail, it's all been retained here. So this is the reason why we do the um, exposure index push the way we are for Cine EI shooting. Next we want to look at our waveform. So as you can see in our original clip, right along the top of the 100% line there, just barely scraping by. and our mid-tones are up above 50%, it's not where we want them to be. Um, introducing the ND filter brings our mid-tones back down, but by pushing our 3200 EI, it brings our highlights back up to where they should be, but just underneath that clipping point as well. So much better, more even exposure. And as we can see here, originally we set at ISO 800. Our exposure index is also showing 800. Shooting in S gamma three, uh, S log three. We're looking at S seven hundred nine as our uh, rec seven hundred nine color space. And this other one here, we're at ISO eight hundred, but our exposure index is set to thirty two hundred. Everything else is the same. Still, still shooting S log three. Still shooting S seven hundred nine. And all of those changes are made in Catalyst for hours. Uh, and with the update, you'll be able to do that in um, Premiere Pro moving forward.